Hello everybody, Julia here from Just One More Card, and today I want to show you different ways how to create watercolor backgrounds. I know a lot of you are, don't feel terribly comfortable with watercolors because you have so little control, so I want to show you how you can use a few tricks. I will be using this stamp set from Purple Onion Designs also to create some simple sentiment cards. So first of all, I'm starting with regular watercolor. I am using the Gansai Tambi watercolor pants. This is my color chart here. If you have like tubes and other traditional watercolors, um, this, is, this is the way that you would probably normally do this. So I started out by wetting my surface. You can see where it reflects the light, it's wet. And the reason I'm doing this is when the surface is wet, it's much easier for the color to mix and to seep away and to give you this nice watercolor look. You can see here my brush is loaded with the color but also with a lot of water and I'm just dripping the color onto this wet paper surface. You will have to experiment with your own watercolor paper um, and with your watercolors to see um, what amount of water is right for your project. After I applied like the base color here, I'm coming back and I'm loading a lot more color onto my brush, but I also have a lot of water in the brush. As you can see here, every time the color just moves away, that means that there's a lot of water there on the surface and on, in my brush. And you can just push the color around until you feel it's right, and then I, you can set it, let it dry or use your heat gun to dry it, and then you have this watercolor background. Now, if you don't have regular watercolors, but you have the stress inks, you can use them. What I'm doing here is I'm simply sponging the stress inks um, in various shades of green. I know it looks yellow, but it is green, believe me. Um, onto my watercolor paper, and then I'm using my mini mister. Mine is also filled with perfect pearls, but yours could be filled with just water. And all I'm doing is I'm spritzing it from above a few times. Uh, you have to test how much water you want to add until the color starts to run because it is basically watercolor. You can let it sit flat or you can move it around to create nice effects. And here I dried it with my heat gun as well and I have this watercolor background. It's a, it's a bit smoother than the other background that I created. And this must be my favorite technique. It's the stress ink stamping. What you need is a solid stamp. I do have these um, stamps by distress pattern stamps by my favorite things, but every somewhat solid stamp would work. What you do is you just ink it up with your watercolor. In my case, it's distress ink. And then uh, you can spritz it, you can huff on it, or I like to use a brush because I can control the amount of water that I put on there and I can, you can even create neat effects. And then I'm stamping this onto my watercolor paper. And you can see when I lift it up, it looks like a really awesome splotch, like I like created this somehow, but all I did was just stamp it. I'm repeating this with my red color. This would be great for Halloween, by the way, it's like blood splatters. And I'm doing this also for the purple here. Just stamping this down, you can see just how wet it is. And then I loaded my brush up with water, just with clean water, and I'm mixing the colors together here to create my background. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm not um, like pulling the darker color too much into the lighter color, so I'm cleaning my brush off in between. And you can just, you know, be as artistic as you want. You can leave it the way you stamped it. I just loaded my brush up with water and then I uh, made the color run around a bit just to uh, increase the area that I had uh, stamped here. Using my heat gun to heat this again, and you can see that I created a background that looks as if I have had painted it, but in fact I stamped it. So then it was very easy for me to stamp uh, the sentiments with Versamark onto this dried background and heat emboss it. That was all that I did. You can use these backgrounds for all sorts of things. Here, for example, I used white heat embossing, and this is the background that we created with the traditional watercolors. This is the background that we stamped. You can see there's virtually no difference there. You can't really see any difference. And this is the background that I created with the Distress Inks. That one has the smoothest blend. Um, so if you want to go for something smooth, that's maybe the way to go. But otherwise, <clears throat> try stamping with the Distress uh, Inks and Solid Stamps. You will see it's a fantastic way to create watercolor backgrounds. I hope this inspired you. If you uh, want to learn more about watercolor backgrounds or using watercolor techniques, check out these two videos that show two different techniques. And if you liked my video, please subscribe to my channel or leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Catch you again soon. Bye-bye.